In this webcast, we're going to talk about uh, angular motion, angular position, displacement, angular velocity, and ang angular acceleration. So uh, for a fixed uh, axis rotation, first we have to understand that um, a point, any point P, cannot have an angular motion because it doesn't have a dimension. So for an angular motion, we need a straight line. If we take, this is our origin, and this is at any point P, and the line, the green line, connects from origin O to B, and this is represented by the radial position, radial line R. So if we have that line, now we can have angular motion. Let's talk about um, angular position. For angular position um, of R can be defined by any um, angle theta. So if I go al along my axis from here to there, any R distance, and if I move theta degree angle this direction, I'll be at point P, which is the current position of my um, radial line R, this green line. So this is called angular position and how this is how we define angular position. Now what is the angular displacement? Well think if you have this point P and if you rotate now if you have a different point P from initial here to there and for visualization, we put another black line here and we assume this is your point P now. So that little tiny ch small change in theta direction, theta, we call it a small change d theta. So this is the angular displacement um, d theta because it's the displacement in angle. So now we have seen that the line radial line R can rotate changing this angle theta. If we change in one second, if we change the same angle in five seconds, the rate would be different. So angular displacement d, d theta is if it takes place in dt time, small amount of time, which is represented by dt. So the change the rate of change of the angle of this line about a given time is the angular velocity which is represented by omega is d theta over dt so what it means is that how much angle is changing um, given in time dt the unit of angular velocity um, could be radian per second. Um, now let's talk about um, angular acceleration. So once you have understand how we get angular velocity, angular acceleration is easy. You know, you can get the acceleration if you take a derivative of with respect to time um, of the angular velocity or you can take a double derivative of the change of the theta and you can get angular um, acceleration. One th thing to understand that this angular velocity and angular acceleration is the angular velocity and acceleration of the radial line, not the point. And we'll see how we can connect the angular velocity and acceleration of the radial line R with the velocity of the point. Now let's talk about the motion of point P. So far we talked about the motion of the radial line R, the green line. Now we're going to talk about the motion of point, the red point P here. Um, the P will have a circular path 
it will not have an angular path angular velocity or angular motion it has a circular path motion so the position and displacement how do we talk uh, define the position of p to define the position of p we need the vector r the green line and then the angle theta this will direct the position of point p displacement the any displacement um, ds of point p along a circular path uh, may be this direction or that direction any small displacement here can be defined by the geometric rules that we know that arc equals to radius into multiplied by theta so a small displacement here uh, if we write it here a small displacement here ds would be defined as the radius r and angle um, d theta if we take first derivative with respect to time then we'll get the velocity of p which is equals to r remains the same d theta over dt will become omega so the velocity of p is related to the angular velocity of the uh, radial line r this um, relationship now we are going to derive the relationship between angular um, acceleration of the radial line with the acceleration um, of the particle. So if we um, look at the cross section, the top view of the gear that we are looking at. So this is the top view and if we take the uh, position point P that was there and we have the origin here and the p is supposed to rotate in this direction so we have derived that is um, v velocity of particle p is uh, equals to the um, angular velocity of the radial distance r multiplied by with the radius r now we know f for uh, p it will have a two component of the acceleration tangential and normal component and we know uh, the tangential component of the acceleration is um, dv over dt and uh, the angular the normal component of the acceleration is v square over rho in this case the rho is the radius of curvature which would be v square over r now if we plug the value v here we will get a t equals to derivative of omega r with respect to t since uh, our r is constant so it will not be in the derivative so it will be r into d omega dt which is actually the angular acceleration alpha of the radial line r so the ang uh, tangential acceleration of the point p would be equals to r alpha so this is the relationship of um, angular acceleration with the tangential component of the point p which was rotating in circular motion